guys, how's it going? Laura with Garden Answer. Today I want to show you a really fun way to recycle your Christmas tree and feed the birds at the same time. So let me show you how I made all of these ornaments first. So let's start with the bird seed ornaments. First grab a muffin tin and grease it with cooking spray. Set it aside and grab a bowl. Pour in two packages of plain gelatin and one cup of hot water and stir until the gelatin is dissolved. Then add six tablespoons of light corn syrup and one and a half cups of flour. Now stir it up until it resembles a sticky paste. Then you can add eight cups of wild bird seed. I use a custom blend of bird seed that's mixed at our local garden center, but any wild bird seed will do. Stir again until the bird seed and the paste are blended really well. Fill each individual muffin cup about halfway. I find that if you dip your fingers in water occasionally, it helps to keep the seed from sticking to your fingers. Then grab a few pieces of jute twine or ribbon, make a loop and press them down into the seed mixture. Add more of the mixture over the top of the twine to fill the cup, then press down firmly. You'll wanna let these dry for several hours up to overnight. Next up are the pine cone ornaments, and these are really simple. Lay out a piece of wax or parchment paper, grab a knife, some peanut butter, bird seed, and your pine cones, and just slather up those pine cones on all sides with peanut butter. It feels a little awkward, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Then roll it around in the bird seed until all the peanut butter is covered, and then you can set your pine cone down. Take a piece of twine, make a loop, then grab your glue gun and hot glue it to the top, and that's it. Look at how pretty all of these look. Making garlands are a little time consuming, but totally worth it. I'm using six pound test fishing line and a large needle. I'm gonna start with a few cranberries, about five will do, then a slice of dried orange, followed by a few pieces of popcorn. The popcorn is probably the hardest thing to thread. Just go slow and direct your needle through the fleshiest part of the popcorn. Repeat these layers until you've got a nice long piece of garland. The last garland I'm making is out of fresh slices of apples and oranges. Make your slices at least a quarter inch thick, if not more. You want them to be sturdy enough to stay on the twine. For the apples, lay out a piece of wax or parchment paper, grab your knife, peanut butter, and birdseed again, and slather peanut butter on half of the apple slice front and back. Dip it in birdseed and lay it on the paper. Just keep doing that until all your apple slices are done. Then grab some jute twine and a large needle, thread on an orange, then an apple, and repeat until your garland is as long as you want it. I prefer to keep my garlands fairly short, like under four feet, because they're a lot easier to work with. So here's everything I made to decorate the tree, and I actually think it looks really pretty just setting out here on the table just like this. So in this corner here, I've got all my pine cone ornaments. I think I ended up with like 17 of them or so. I think they're really pretty. And then on this tray here, I've got my garland that's got the popcorn, cranberries, and dried oranges. And I am not gonna lie, it is a pain to string popcorn. So kind of halfway through that project, I, I ended up just taking all the cranberries I had left and I made just cranberry garland. It was a lot easier. Then I've got three plates of the birdseed ornaments. And I think I've got about 40 of those and they're different sizes. So I had like a regular muffin tin size right here. And then I had the jumbo muffin tin. So these are a little bit wider. And I used a little bit of leftover red rope ribbon I had um, from Christmas and then some jute twine. I also have three finch sock feeders, which I clearly did not make myself. Um, but these are lightweight. They're about 13 ounces. And I thought that these would be really great to hang in the tree just for some extra bulk. And there are still finches around. So I think they'll really like the Niger seed that's in there. And then these are also ones I bought that I did not make. So these are full of sunflower seeds for bigger birds. I have three here on the table, but I did bring home five altogether. And then I've got my apple and orange garlands. Now the birds usually really take after the apples and of course the peanut butter and seed right there. The oranges are a little bit more for decorative purposes. I did notice last year because we had so much snow and it came so early that the birds actually ate everything I put out for them because they were really hungry. This year, this is our first real snow and we only have a few inches. So there's still a lot that the birds are foraging. So they might not, might not start nibbling on those oranges until Maybe we get more snow or if they get desperate for food, but um, I just wanted a little bright pop on the tree. And then in this bowl here, I've just got the rest of my cranberry garlands. So these should look really pretty, I think. So now let me tell you a little bit about this tree. So it's quite large. This is actually not a tree I had inside of our house because we do artificial because we heat with wood and I just don't like the fire hazard and we have a couple of family members that are allergic. So anyway, this one came from the garden center where I work. We had two this size left over this year. Typically we put a for free sign on them Christmas Eve morning and put them out on the sidewalk. If anybody wants to come take them, they can take them if they haven't had a chance to get a tree. But since these are so big, 
we really didn't expect for them to go and they didn't. So I took one um, and brought it home because I thought, oh, this is gonna be perfect. I could decorate it out here. And that's the benefit of having either your Christmas tree from inside your house, or if you're picking one up for free from a tree lot that's left over, is that you can put it in your yard wherever you want. I mean, of course you could do all these same things and decorate a tree that's planted somewhere in your garden. But this one I could strategically place right where I can see it out a window that I always sit by. So I can watch the birds and really, really enjoy it. Plus you get the kind of added benefit that you're giving, you know, your tree extra life. You're extending the life of your tree. And like this one wasn't able to fulfill its Christmas destiny. So now it has a chance to like live and provide a purpose out here for the birds. And this is a noble fir, by the way. This is one that they left natural. They didn't shear it as it was growing. So there's lots of beautiful architecture to this tree. So now the fun part, I get to decorate. It turned out so cute. And I love the fact that this tree was left natural because it left so much room for these things to hang. And it really showcases, I think, all of the ornaments and garlands that I used in this the whole thing. Um, so the thing that you do want to be mindful of is that you want to make sure you put it somewhere where it's protected from any wind. So right where we've got this tree in our yard, there's a huge bank of shrubs and trees right to my right. So, and this is the way the wind comes. So it should be just fine. It's on a really big tree stand, so it should stay upright. The other thing you want to be mindful of, and I didn't think about until we were kind of into the project, is if you have kitties, you probably want to keep them inside if you're going to do something like this. So Russell was out here when we very first started the project and then I realized how low to the ground all of these ornaments ended up and I thought it would be a disaster if you have a kitty out here and the birds are starting to land. So we put Russell inside and we will keep him inside until we decide to uh, take this tree down. So just be mindful of that. I mean if you're trying to attract the birds into your yard you want to put the food and, uh, and things that are attracting those birds away from predators. Uh, and that's kind of what I do when I put out my regular bird feeders. I usually hang them from a branch in a tree with a long metal S hook and that way there's no way cats can get anywhere close to the feeders. So just keep that in mind if you decide to tackle this type of project. So I did do quite a few different styles of ornaments which you certainly don't have to do that many. I just wanted to give you guys an idea of several different things that you could do. And you can do just all homemade stuff. You can add in, you know, little store-bought kind of inexpensive feeders if you want like I did. You don't have to. But the whole thing is very inexpensive, very easy to do, and just a really fun project. And I really had a great time doing it. I also think it's a really great project for kids. So that is pretty much it for this project. If you guys think that this was fun, please share it with your friends, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.